January 9th, the first Sunday of Epiphany. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Glad you're all here. Um, Michael Weaver texted me to say he has COVID. Yeah. Everybody knows that already, so uh, he won't be here this week, obviously. Um, okay, our opening hymn is 448. prayer book, Eucharistic, Holy Eucharist, Rite 2. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. F277. F277. S277, right. Yeah. That's yeah. Praise you for your glory. 
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 29. Uh, it's on our, our bulletin. Let's do it by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of slander. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. God makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oath the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest air. And in the temple of the Lord. All are crying for glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to God's people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is the first Sunday of Epiphany. Epiphany, the appearing, the celebration of the incarnation, the appearing of God in human form. Uh, our, our readings are short today, but they are potent. Uh, Isaiah says, um, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Hear that. You are mine. We are God. The, uh, the baptism of Jesus, it's a, a sort of an odd thing because we think of baptism in relationship to John's baptism, which is the washing away of sins. But Jesus has no sins to wash away, so why is he getting baptized? Um, well, I think partly it's as an example how many of us here have been baptized. All of us, yes. It's a Christian thing to get baptized. It starts the, it starts the relationship with Christ. Um, and so as an example it's a great thing that he did it so we all share with him what he did as well in, uh, in John's gospel he, he says uh, uh, well okay the book it's okay all right it won't hurt I know anyway um, in John's gospel he's he says something about baptism which I can't remember now <laughs> the, uh, no he, he says it, it's basically we uh, um, it's sort of we do it for good order it's the right thing to do so um, so but I think of it in a little different way I think it makes us all part of the same group. You know, it's very same feeling that you get when God says to Isaiah, you are mine, you belong to me. Jesus having his baptism says, we are all part of him and he us. We belong to him. That's that's a powerful thing because baptism is really about belonging it's about becoming part of the community now January is the month that I always read a huge uh, book uh, more than often than not it's war and peace but not this year 
um, I'm reading the third volume of Shelby Foote's uh, Civil War narrative, which uh, if you know anything about Shelby Foote, he's actually a novelist and a historian, and he's writing in detail about the Civil War. The interesting thing is uh, we have the conclusion, of course, we know that uh, the Union won, but on the way to that victory, there were a lot of defeats, and uh, he, he details those in, in incredible detail. But one thing jumped out at me as I was thinking about this Sunday, and I happened to be reading this particular section. Um, there were two major movements that ended the war, the Civil War. The one movement was in the East, uh, Lee against Grant, and basically that was a, it was a continuous kind of thing where, where Grant kept moving to the East and Lee kept matching him. And they went through the wilderness and they went to Spotsylvania and they went to Cold Harbor and then uh, Grant outsmarted him and got past the uh, the James River and, and uh, invested um, Petersburg, which is where essentially a siege happens. Um, and the siege goes on until uh, Lee has just had it with that and he breaks out and of course at the River App Appomattox at the courthouse itself, the end, the war ends for Lee. But the war doesn't just end, it kind of shrinks to a, a slow concern because there are a number of other people and other, other armies that have to be defeated as well. And that takes another month or two, but um, the main event was Lee and Grant. But the second event was Sherman and the Army of Tennessee, which was uh, led by Joseph uh, Johnston. And he was, his whole purpose, they were going basically from Nashville down to Atlanta, at least the first part of it. And uh, again, very similar uh, <laughs> Sherman kept trying to get ahead of him and 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 Johnston kept moving down and as a matter of fact Johnston's uh, retreat which is what it was his retreat is still studied in war colleges everywhere because it was brilliant um, the way he did it one of his uh, corps commanders, he had three corps in his army, uh, was a guy named Leonidas Polk. Leonidas Polk was the Bishop of Mississippi, the Episcopal Bishop of Mississippi, and, uh, and also a Lieutenant General. Um, and uh, I, I think he was probably a better Bishop than he was a General, but uh, he nevertheless he, uh, he was one of his corps commanders, and um, Joseph Johnston's wife wrote to him and said, my husband has not been baptized. Would you please baptize him? Well, you know, when a bishop comes to you and says, I'm going to baptize you, you get baptized. And so they had a war council, and then they adjourned to a tent, where there was an altar and uh, a font. And he was Joseph Johnston, the leader of the Army of Tennessee, uh, was baptized. He was baptized by this Episcopal Bishop, Polk, Bishop Polk. But he was not the only one who was baptized. A week later, one of the other um, 
Corps commanders, a guy named uh, Hood, you've probably all heard of Fort Hood. Well, John Bell Hood is the, is the person who that is named after. And of course it's in Texas because he obviously was a Confederate uh, general. He was a Confederate general with one leg. Uh, he had to be strapped to his horse. Um, but anyway, he went and was baptized also by Leonidas Polk. Now, what were these people doing? I mean, they obviously were all working together and they, um, <laughs> they cared about each other and they were concerned and they worked together um, in this great task that they had to try to defend against the Union. I'm not saying that I sympathize with what they were doing, but I sympathize with the fact that they were part of a community that was trying to do something. And they were baptized into a wider community that was beyond the Confederacy and the Union. It was beyond that. It was a bigger thing. They were. They were baptized into the community of Christ, of which we are all a part. I own you, God says. God says in Isaiah, or was it Jeremiah? Uh, you read it, so. Anyway, um, well, why do I? Isaiah, or as the English would say, Isaiah. Um, well, here they were baptized in the middle of war, in the middle of the most important uh, series of battles that they were ever going to um, be part of. As a matter of fact, uh, John Bell Hood took over from Joseph Johnston before, right before they got to uh, Atlanta. Um, Jefferson Davis was not happy with Johnston and relieved him and, and appointed John Bell Hood as the head of the Army of Tennessee. Um, in the meantime, since those two baptisms, Leonidas Polk was killed as the commander of the, uh, of the First Corps, actually. Um, he was... Uh, he was on. A, he was on Pine Mountain, which is known to the locals as Piney Top, which is about ten miles west of Marietta, Georgia. And they were in a salient. You know what a salient is? It's it's a when you have a forward position that's actually sort of surrounded by your enemy. A salient, a good example of a salient was the Battle of the Bulge. The Bulge was a salient in uh, World War II. Um, anyway, the Piney Top was a salient and the generals, the Confederate generals all went to look because out there on the plain were the Union folks and so they could look right down and they could see their enemy right there. Um, so they went up and then one of the artillery units started firing upon them. They were only half a mile away. So, um, and they fired three shots and the third one hit Leonidas Pope and killed him. Um, so the Bishop of Mississippi uh, died before the Battle of Atlanta, but not before he hadn't baptized the head of the army and one of its corps commanders. And he baptized them in, not into the Confederacy and not into the Union, which they certainly wouldn't have done, but into the community of Christ, the body of Christ. That's what we're baptized into. That's what we belong to. That is our 
central community, our essential community, the one that reminds us whenever things don't go well, and let's face it, <laughs> not going well seems to be the way things are um, at times. Uh, here we are with round three of the COVID virus. So um, we're all saying, okay, Lord, <laughs> we got your message, whatever it is. <laughs> and, uh, and we are incredibly depressed <laughs> from this, uh, this disease. We are conflicted. We, are, we have done a terrible job of being a community uh, in the face of it, um, but we are yours. We belong to you. He says, you are mine. And we are his by right of baptism. And for us who baptize once, that's Orthodox and um, Lutherans and Anglicans and Roman Catholics, there's one baptism. That's, you can only begin the relationship once. And that baptism is that moment to begin and it is indelible, meaning it lasts forever and it is part of who you are. For most of us, that happens before we know it. I was two weeks old. I, I don't think I knew much of anything at two weeks old. Uh, but I had one advantage, and that was my father, who was on his way to the Pacific for World War II. He was able to be momentarily in St. Louis at Christ Church Cathedral when I was two weeks old, which is in the middle of March, 1945. <coughs> and he was sent off to Guam, Saipan, and Okinawa. Primarily, he was a member of the body of Christ, bringing his infant son, whom he did not see for two more years, because he went off to, went off to war. My mother, tells me that uh, my father and I resented each other mightily when he returned. Uh, he was used to his wife being the only one in his life, and now he has this child. And at that point, I was two years old. And let's face it, the terrible twos are the terrible twos. <laughs> because we are learning that great word, no. We are learning to hear it, which we don't like, and we're learning to use it, which we do like. Um, I was reminded of that, my uh, nephew's children. My sister moved to St. Louis um, so she could be near her grandchildren. And her youngest, who is three, Melody. Melody's quite bright. Um, that's always a challenge, whether you realize it or not. But at one point, uh, they were getting up to leave, and uh, um, a nephew said to Melody, so hug Uncle Russ goodbye, and she looked right at me and she said, no, <laughs> with a big smile on her face. <laughs> so we get it, <laughs> we get it pretty early. Well. We are, we are born into this community of Christ through baptism. It is the one thing that all Christians share, um, the beginning of our relationship with Christ. Now, that, that language, the relationship with Christ, we think of that as sort of ancient, but it isn't ancient. It's only about 300 years old. Um, nobody talked about a relationship with Christ until 
the 1700s, really. And uh, so we've been talking about it ever since <laughs> because that's one of the ways we understand our relationship. See, I can't even make a sentence without using it. Okay, well, I've had my say. If you have anything to add, that would be your welcome at this point. I can see I really am missing Michael Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can say is that show me foot was, not is. Oh, no, that's true. <laughs> well, his book still is. Yes, they are. His book is, yes, he was. And uh, he's a great writer. I mean, he's, he's just really a great writer. Um, and he's pretty, you know, even balanced which for a uh, Kentuckian or Tennessean, uh, he's one of those two, he was one of those two, um, is pretty amazing actually. Um, but it's in my neat new detail about what happened. Uh, I just went through reading about uh, Forrest's great victory in Northern uh, Mississippi who even knew that the Civil War had anything to do with Mississippi other than giving us Jefferson Davis. But it did. It was a great victory on the part of Forrest. What they didn't tell you, <laughs> what Shelby Foote does tell you, is that the whole purpose of <coughs> engaging Forrest in Mississippi was to keep him away from Georgia where he would have messed up Sherman's march <laughs> to the sea because <laughs> he would have cut off his supplies. So in one sense, Forrest won the battle, <laughs> but he, he, he lost the reality of what he was supposed to be doing, which was messing up Sherman's uh, march to Atlanta, and then, and then he just went all over the place. I mean, he, to South Carolina and North Carolina and and, uh, you know, given time, he would have probably, <laughs> who knows, come up on, on uh, Lee as well. We uh, tell the story that our daughter related to us when she lived in Macon, Georgia. She went, that's where she went to law school. Oh, sure. And when, on, when uh, Sherman was marching to the sea, when he got to Macon, he went around Macon and left the beautiful antebellum home and all these buildings that, because his roommate at uh, West Point, I believe, was the mayor of uh, Macon. <laughs> so he, he went around it. Well, and, you know, that's the wonderful thing about reading Shelby Foote, because you realize all these people are all related to each other. All of those officers went to West Point with each other, you know, so they knew each other. You know, and they sort of knew that, uh, you know, Sherman was mercurial, which we would now say bipolar, uh, you know, but they knew who he was, you know. And they also knew that, that, that Lee was about the most aggressive general that ever put on the stars. I mean, he just would go for the juggler every time, and he pretty much got the juggler pretty often against the uh, Army of the Potomac. It's interesting the names they give to these armies, but I digress. Okay, well, let's stand and say our creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was 
made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6, on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and the justice and For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God, God in this church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For the problems with the nation of Kazakhstan. For Donna, Eric, Ann, Maggie, Tom, Glenda, Amber, Bob, Tom, Sherry, Corky, Carol, Kathy, Jimmy, Robert, Carla, Kaylee, Chris, Kristen, Lori, Judy, Mike, Lynn, Denise, Larry, Gabby, Hazel, Mark, Ashley, Sherry, and Patricia. Hear us, Lord. For your we, your we thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. For the new year. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, Lord, our Father. Father. In your, your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And you so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live in Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace.
was thinking about the piece, which was sort of reintroduced <laughs> when all of us were younger. And uh, I remember we hardly, you know, we could hardly, you know, could come to touch each other. And then we got into the, the full barrel hugs. <laughs> And then COVID came along and we went back to the... <laughs> anyway, time for announcements. Um, annual meeting. Do we have any idea? We don't have a date yet, but we have vestry uh, this Wednesday, and I'm sure the day will come with that. The only thing other that I can think of is we are expecting a, a visit from our bishop on the 30th. Right. Right, yes. Who has just instituted? Uh, I saw it on <laughs> YouTube. I think um, it was a grand feast. It seemed like it was well done. Uh, she seemed delightful, actually. Um, so, <laughs> walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. What number? 120. Who for 
forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Closing hymn at number 76. <laughs> serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia. And you all have a good week.